in sewing a pattern is the template from which the parts of a garment are traced onto fabric before being cut out and assembled. Patterns are usually made of paper and are sometimes made of sturdier materials like paperboard or cardboard. If they need to be more robust to withstand repeated use. The process of making or cutting patterns is sometimes condensed to the one word that is known as pattern making. But it can also be written pattern making or pattern cutting. Garment construction is usually guided by a pattern. A pattern can be quite simple. Some patterns are nothing more than a mathematical formula that the sewer calculates based on the intended wearer's measurements. Once calculated, the sewer has the measurements needed to cut the cloth and shoe the garment together. At the end of the spectrum are haute couture fashion designs. When a couture garment is made of unusual material or has extreme proportions, the design may challenge the sewer's engineering knowledge. The swing pattern is retail, relatively the most accepted part of the fashion industry. As without this, the industry of garment manufacturing and fashion designing is incomplete. And most important is the pattern cutting machine, where the tailor needs to measure the figure and cut the fabric after putting an outline marked to it. It is the process of developing pattern for many styles and that can be created. This is called sloper or the home sewing that is mostly used in the fashion industry. This frequently employs a variety of pattern creation methods. A sloper pattern or block pattern Block pattern mostly we use in industrial production and sloper pattern 
mostly we use in home sewing. So these are the uh, custom fitted basic pattern from which patterns for many different styles can be developed. The process of changing the size of a finished pattern is called grading. Several companies specialize in selling pre-graded patterns directly to consumers who will show the pattern at home. Commercial clothing manufacturers make their own patterns in-house as part of their design and production process, usually employing at least one specialized pattern maker. In bespoke clothing, Slopers and patterns must be developed for each client, while for commercial production, patterns will be made to fit several standard body sizes. Most clothing today is mass produced and conforms the standard sizing based on body measurements that are intended to fit the greatest proportion of the population. However, while standard sizing is generally a useful guideline, it is little more than that because there is industry standard that is both widely accepted and strictly adhere to in all markets. Homes was of work from patterns purchased from companies such as Simplicity, Butterick, McCall's, Vogue and many others. Such patterns are typically printed on large pieces of tissue paper. A stitcher may simply cut out the required pattern pieces for use but may choose to transfer the pattern onto a thicker paper. If repeated use is desired, a sewer may choose to alter a pattern to make it more accurately fit the intended wearer. Patterns may be changed to increase or reduce lengths, to add or remove fullness, to adjust the position of waistline, shoulder line, side seams and so many other seams or a variety of other adjustments also. The volume can be added with elements such as pleats or reduced with the use of darts before work is started on the final garment. Test garments 
may be made sometimes referred to as muslin. After patterns for the sewing, I just want to add on the birth of different garments. The shirt. The shirt was created by the Greeks in 5th century BC and it was for a long time identified with the proletariat since Bulgaria's concealed it. Instead, today it is associated with elegance and respectability. Next is the blouse. The blouse dates from 15th century when women started using a type of tight blouse with a belt. For centuries it was the garment of pleasant women and then it was replaced by a lighter one that masked feminine suits. In 1913 low cut blouses appeared and were known as pneumonia shirts. Next one is skirt. The skirt was at first made of fur. Along, around 6 years ago, since then until now, women never abandoned it. In 1915, skirt began to expose the ankles and the great revolution took place in 1965 with the mini skirt. Trousers that is also known as patloons in Spanish. Trousers owes their name to the martyr medical doctor of fourth century San Pantalon. 4,000 years ago, men from normed tribe of Central Europe wore a type of loose trousers tied up to the vest. But it was in 1830 when trousers developed as we know them nowadays. In 1960s, jeans were created by Levi's Strauss, a German that immigrated to San Francisco during the gold fever. Next is rompers. Rompers appeared by the mid 20th century and the Venice Walter Argite created this. This garment allowed changing diapers without undressing the baby. It was great acceptance. Later becoming a very popular clothing item. And apart from these, almost all the garments 
category is unisex clothing. The unisex clothing appeared in 40s and enjoyed great popularity among young people. There are more clothes apart from this which has different accessories together. So here the thing is that we should recognize every garments and we or others wear has a history of its own and that the effort and creativity of others allow us through their work. To enjoy all those things that make our lives better and more comfortable. History of sewing machine As we know a sewing machine is a machine used to stitch fabric and other materials together with thread. The sewing machines were invented during the first industrial revolution to decrease the amount of manual sewing work performed in garment companies. Since the invention of first working machine generally considered to have been the work of Englishman Thomas Sent in 1790. The sewing machine has greatly improved the efficiency and the productivity of clothing industry. So we will be discussing here about the history of sewing machines which is not completely known so far and we wanted to highlight those the history here. The history of sewing machine is one littered with accusation, failed attempts and some serious scandals also. From narrowing scapping death of patent lawsuits, it is an interesting story that demonstrates the seemingly humble sewing machine ruffled more than few feathers in its infantry. The history of sewing machine would not exist without the artistry of hand sewing. People started sewing by hand around 20,000 years ago where the first needles were made from bones or animal horns and the thread made from animal sinews. Our invention in sticks explains the natural progression to want to improve sewing techniques and make it less laborious. Cue the industrial revolution in 18th century where the need to decrease manual sewing in factories become paramount. 1755 is the day when first patent happened, 
for the sewing machine. It was Charles Wessenthal, a German man, was issued a British patent for a needle that is designed for a machine. But there is no description in Wessenthal's patent of any mechanical machine. But it shows there was a need for such an invention. 1790s, the first detailed design. The history of sewing machine essentially starts here. Englishman Thomas Sant designed the first sewing machine of its kind. The patent described a machine power with a hand crank to be used for leather and canvas, con can canvas in fact. Nobody knows if Sant built a prototype, but in 1874, William Newton Wilson found the patent drawings. They were so detailed, he built a replica proving that it did work. Early 18th century, many attempts and many fails happen. It is worth mentioning that all attempts of designing a sewing machine before the first successful ones all moved the needle side to side and were powered with a winding handle. In 1810, Balthasar Krems invented an automatic machine for sewing caps. He did not patent his design, but it did not work anyway. In 1814, an Austrian tailor, Joseph Maders, was issued a patent in 1814. He was persistent attempting several different designs, but all were unsuccessful. In 1818, John Adams Doggy and John Knowles invent America's first sewing machine, but it could only sew a few bits of fabric before breaking. Now, in 1830, the first successful sewing machine. The 40 years since Thomas sent first drew and described a machine for sewing, it was finally have a functioning sewing machine. Barthley May Timonier, a French tailor, invented a machine that used a hook handle and one thread creating a chain stitch. In the same year, 1830, there is a right and near death experience happened. After the successful patent, Thimonier opened the world's first machine 
best clothing manufacturing company his job was to create uniforms for french army but when other french tailors got wind of his invention they were not too pleased they feared his machine would result in their employment so they burnt down his factory while he was still inside never take your machine out for the granted even again this guy almost died for it then 1834 this is an example of sticking true to your belief walter hunt created america's first functioning sewing machine but he had second thoughts hunt though such a machine would cause unemployment for many so he did not bother to patent the design and that was the reason things got messy at that time in 1844 the sewing machine we have seen so far are all made of disjoined elements with nothing really working together in 1844 english inventor john fisher designed a sewing machine that would eliminate this disparity between the moving parts however a boost feeling up the print office in 1845 Elias Hogg and Lockstitch Elias Hogg from America invents a sewing machine that resembles Fisher's with same tweaks and adjustment his patent was to investigate process from others uses that is thread for two different sources his machine has a needle with an eye at the point which goes through the fabric creating a loop on the reverse a shuttle on the track that slips the second third thought of the loop created that is called the lock stitch he struggled to the mark in the market to sell his design so he took the plunge and sailed to england after lengthy stay he returned to his motherland only to find others had copied his lock stitch machines one of those was an aishik married singer in 1851 isaac married singer is one of the most all known sewing machine manufacturers building an empire that is still going today his iconic singer sewing machine are beautifully ornate the some what legend legacy he developed the first version of modern day sewing machine with a foot pedal and up and down needle he was also inspired by elements from how hunt and timonier invention causing how to file a suit now 
the real stitch up elas how took singer to court for patent infringement where he defended his case and won isaac singer tried to refer back to walter hunt's design expressing that how infringed upon his idea unfortunately for singer this did not have any impact at all the lack of patent on hunt's design meant it was intellectual property for anybody to use so these are the issues and ups and downs happen during the invention of the machines so despite all the allegations drama and legal dispute how and singer both died multimillionaires and each of these pioneering investors gave the world the sewing machine without the early failed attempts and sheer persistence to create something that would relieve the women and factory workers for long perilous hours and who knows what our clothing manufacturing industry would look like today the history of sewing machine is complicated one and as a result many enthusiastic still debate who can claim the title of real investor thank you figure types sizes and body measurements why we need standard measurements what is the use of standard measurements in pre industrial america most clothing was crafted at home or by professional tailors or dressmakers from individual measurements taken of each customer in early 20th century the growing urban middle class began to purchase the affordable and fashionable ready to wear merchandise which new technology and industrialized production methods have created the means to manufacture at the request of mail order association of america that is known as moaa <coughs> between 1949 to 1952 the national bureau of standards nbs now nist conducted a comprehensive study of women's body measurement to develop a sizing standard for women's ready to wear clothing the four most common female body shapes are banana apple pear and are glass so this traditional female body shapes categories were around 46.12% of the women falls under rectangle shape while 20.92% of women falls under spoon body shapes 13.83% falls under triangle shapes and 8.40% falls under r glass shape rectangle shapes are where the bust and hips are basically the same circumference 
the waist is less than 9 inch smaller than the bust. Spoon is basically where the hips are 2 inches or more larger than the bust area. The waist is less than 9.25 smaller than the bust. Triangle shape is basically where bust is 3.6 inches or larger than the hips and the waist is less than 9 inches smaller than the bust. And hourglass is bust and hips are basically the same circumference though the bust can be up to 1 inches larger than the hip. The waist is then 9 inches or more smaller than the bust. Now, we will move to standard sizes. There are several standards related to size designation of clothes. ISO 36351981 Size designation of clothes, definitions and body measurement procedures. Then next is ISO 4416-1981 that talks about the size again size designation of the clothes where women's and girls underwear, nightwear, foundation wear and skirts in fact shirt. ISO 5971-1981 that says about the size designation of clothes that is panty house. ISO 8559-1983-89 talks about garment construction and anthropometric survey, the body dimensions. ISO TR 10562-1991 it talks about the standard sizing system for clothes. EN 13402 European Union has produced to replace existing standard and BS 3661982 the United Kingdom has an existing standard for women clothing and the US standard clothing size which were developed by statistical data in the 1940s and 50s, they are similar in concept to the EN 13902 European clothing size chart. Women size ranges includes junior, messy, petite and large sizes. Junior is basically the customers sizes 1 to 13 have a less developed figure and a sorted back waist length than the Missy figures. This usually is equated with a slim or young customers. Missy the sizes are from 6 to 16 or 4 to 14 are for the mature female figure usually based on a height of approximately 5 feet 7 inches. For Missy separates some body blouses and sweaters are sized 30 to 36. Others may be size small, medium or large. Petit, the sizes are created for the woman who is less than 5 feet 4 inch tall. 
the size ranges from 0 to 16. Most manufacturers limit the size range to 4 to 14. <laughs> and last is the large or woman. Here the size ranges from 14 W to 13 W. Here W stands for woman, but are usually limited to 16 W to 26 W. Sometimes these sizes are represented with 1x 16 to 18, 2x 20 to 22 and 3x 24 to 36. Large sized petites are marked by WP. Now after women we move to the men's size ranges. Men's suit which ranges in size from 36 to 44 with additional large sizes to 50. Originally based on chest measurements. Lens are designated after size number like R for regular, S for small, L for mid long. Here in the men's suit, European sizes are 46 to 54 at 10 each to American sizes. Then young men sizes have a narrower fit in the jacket and hip than regular men's feet. There are an attempt to simplify men's sizing because traditionally sizing requires a huge investment of any combination of chest and length measurement. After men's shirt, it's about dress shirts. Dress shirts are sized to all color measurement inches in American and centimeter in Europe. The sleeve length, sports shirt and sweaters are sized in a small, medium and large and extra large. Trousers, trousers are sized by waist and inseam measurements. Dress legs are left and unhemmed to be finished by the state stores tailor as customer service. Children's sizes are basically newborn, infant, toddler and girls. New are basically the sizes are lay, late 0 to 11 pound or 3, 6 or 9 months baby. Infant sizes are best on the age in the month usually 12, 18 and 24 months. Europe sizes are best on the length of the baby or height of the child. Toddlers, apparel for the child who uh, has learned to walk from size 2T to 3T and 4T, at this point sizes are separate for boys and girls. Now after toddlers is girls. Apparel is sized 4 to 6 X, 7 to 6, some companies manufacture size 2 to 10 or extra small size at 2 extra large. Preteen sizes are 6 to 14 and young teen wears young junior size to 3 to 13. Boys sizes are 4 to 7 and 8 to 10, 20. I will be talking about the anthropometric measurements. The types of measurements in standard sizes. These standard sizes describe response combination of body measurements that are common seen in general population. 
horizontal torso measurements that can be specified include the neck circumference, the shoulder width and the over bust circumference. The bust circumference, the bust point separation, the under bust circumference and natural bust circumference, he would the upper hip curve and the lower hip curve circumference. Then we have the vertical torso measurement that can be specified include the back length and the shoulder length to be none of see none the not the same as the back length due to the slope of the shoulder. The bust shoulder length and the waist shoulder length and two hip shoulder length. Several measurements that can be specified including the under term underarm in fact and overarm length the forearm and length and west arm west circumference and the and the bi biceps circumference then you can able to see that in the standard figures is mentioned there now how to measure how different points are there what is the feature of those points? West relax extended on garments with a west seam measure from side to side along the west seam. On garment with a west band measure from side to side along the center of the west band. Double the measurement for extending manufacturing measurements measure as above with elastic or knit fully extended and then double the measurement. Hip or lie. Lay garments flat with the front of the garment facing you. Measure of the specified number on the size specification seat from hot coat, coat point. Measure side of the side following the contour of the waist pad team. Then thigh. Lay one entire leg flat at the crotch. Measure part down as specified on the size specification seat. At this point, measure across the long parallel to the waist from fold to fold and double the measurement. The knee measurement with leg flat locate the knee measure up the specified amount on the size specification seat. At this point measure across the leg from point to point and double the measurement. Bottom opening leg opening relax or extended lay the bottom for the bottom opening. and the pant leg flat. Measure straight across the bottom opening from fold to fold. Measure the measurement. Rai front rise. A lay garment flat with front of garment facing you. Measure, me measure from the cross seam up the center front seam to the top edge of the garment including waist band. Then we have back rise. Back rise is basically when the we can calculate when lay garment flat on the back of the garment Q. Measure from the cross seam up the center back seam the top edge of the garment including waistband. Inseam. Lay one entire leg flat with inseam fading you. Measure from where the crotch seam joins the inseam down to the bottom of the garment. Outseam. 
lay down one entire leg flat measure from the top of the garment in the into the bottom of length the center back length for skirts garment is flat with the cent back facing you measure from top of the waist band down center back to bottom of the garment and trunk length or torso length measure from the high point of shoulder down the front rise to the fold at the crotch double the measurement next is front rise high point to so of shoulder measure from the high point of shoulder and from the fold of natural shoulder to the bottom of garment keeping the tape measure parallel to the center front next is front length high point of shoulder measure from the high point of the shoulder and from the fold of natural front in the bottom of garment keeping the tape measure parallel to the the center then back length that is on center neck back measure from the joining seam at the neck opening at the bottom edge of the garment chest or bust lay garment flat measure straight across garment from side to side from the bottom of the armhole double the garment measurement in fact sweep lay garment flat making sure that the uh, any pleats are fully extended measure at bottom of the garment following the contour of hem double the measurement for instance measurement measure and above with the elastic and knit fully extended across shoulder lay garment flat with the back of the garment facing you locate the shoulder points where the shoulder seams meet the top of the armhole when there is no shoulder seam measure where the natural fold of the shoulder meets the top of the armhole measure across straight across the shoulder point to shoulder across back lay garment flat with the back of the garment fading you measure the along the neck seam opening for extended measurements measure as above with elastic or knit fully extended placket and zipper opening must be included in extended measurement neck dart or front dart back neck dart in front and back measure down from the beginning line point to point to neck or armhole seam at the center front neck width measure from side to side decide width of the back at the net collar point measure along the collar point is with the joining collar joining seam to the outer end of the garment